Hello, in this presentation we will work a problem related to the accounts payable cycle, a problem similar to one we worked in the past, however, this time instead of posting just to a worksheet, we will be posting from the journal entries to the general ledger over here. The process will then be that we were going to record the journal entries in here. This will be the general journal. We will record the journal entries here in the general journal, journalizing the journal entries. And then we will post those journal entries to the general ledger. The general ledger will be in the same order as the trial balance. Those balances then will be brought over to the trial balance where we can see whether we are in balance or not after each transaction. Remember, all the accounts will be in order of assets, then liabilities, then revenue, then expenses. Same order on the general ledger where we have assets, liabilities, equity, revenue, and expenses. We will be focusing in on the payable cycle or the purchasing cycle and therefore focusing in on the accounts payable account. We're going to be purchasing things on account and then paying off those purchases on account at a later time. Note that we will be recording these transactions from the general journal to the general ledger as we go and constructing the trial balance as we go. And in so doing, we will be able to see whether we or not we are in balance after each transaction, a system I highly recommend doing whenever possible because that'll help you to catch problems as they occur. And that's a technique that you really want to get down in any time you're putting together something within the accounting department or many departments so that uh, you can you can fix the problem once it happens as opposed to uh, putting all the transactions down and then posting all of them and then creating the trial balance here from all of them if you have to work a problem with paper and pencil you may have to do it in that format but you may even want to still try to do it in a format similar to this meaning you erase the trial balance each time and write in the new trial balance to see whether or not you're in balance to see everything is working and uh, fix problems as you go. Uh, if you're working in Excel, of course, that's what I would recommend doing because you can see what is happening and you can make those types of changes without having to do it a lot of erasing. So let's scroll down and see what we have here in the activities. First activity, purchase supplies on account. So we're gonna go through our series of questions and ask first, is cash affected? In this case, we're gonna say no. We purchased something on account and therefore did not pay cash, but paid with something else. The thing we're going to pay with will be accounts payable. However, it's more difficult oftentimes to know whether to debit or credit the accounts payable. Therefore, I would think about what we have received. In this case, we got supplies and we see supplies here in the assets category. That's going to be the account I'll think about first. It is an asset account. The assets are going up. Therefore, we're going to do the same thing to it as its normal balance, which in this case is another debit. So I'm going to copy the supplies in E7, right click, copy. I'm going to put that over here in cell B5, right click and paste, not the paste everything. Okay, I don't want the format. I just want the values only. So we're going to paste one, two, three values only. The amount then will be as given the 585. So we're going to put 585 in cell C5. I'm then going to credit something for that amount. I know we will be crediting something. So I'm going to put negative of that number and I'm going to start using formulas. You could put a negative and just type in the number. Once you select enter, it'll put brackets. I'm going to use a formula as much as possible just to get in the practice of using format formulas as much as possible. We then just need to know this other account. And of course, it's not going to be cash because we did not pay cash it will be accounts payable. Accounts payable, whenever we see that term on account, it's either gonna typically mean accounts payable or accounts receivable. We here dealing with accounts payable at this time. So I'm gonna copy accounts payable in E8 by right clicking, copy accounts payable. I'm gonna put that in cell B6, right click, paste one, two, three. We're then gonna double click in front of the A and space three times to give an indentation for the credit there. Remember that if you don't have something locked, you could go here, home tab, alignment group, and then increase indent, and that will give you that indentation as well without using or needing the space bar. Note that we knew we knew that we were gonna credit the accounts payable because, because we debited supplies, but we also wanna think through it, double check it, 
We know that accounts payable is a credit balance account because it's a liability account. We know that it must be going up because the bad thing is going up. We owe more money for purchasing supplies. Therefore, we will do the same thing to it as its normal balance, which is another credit. So we can kind of double check ourselves there. Also note that supplies is going to be an asset, our introduction to inventory, not an expense at the time of purchase because we have not yet consumed it in order to help us generate revenue at the same time, but are putting it on as an asset to be consumed in the future to help generate revenue at a future time. We're going to post this now. This is the journal entry that we just recorded in the general journal. The process of recording it being the process of journalizing the journal entry and we will now post that journal entry to the general ledger. We're going to start with the supplies account, that being the third account on the trial balance, then the third account on the general ledger. So I'm going to scroll down a bit. It's going to be right there. There's supplies. Now I'm going to try to make this screen a bit smaller so we can see more of it at one time. I'm at 130%. I'm going to make it go down, let's say to 110 not quite so let's bring it down to 100 and then we can we can we have to scroll down a little bit but i'll keep it there we're at the supplies account right here this is on the debit side here's supplies here's the debit side we're going to be right here in j24 now i'm going to say equals and i'm going to scroll up just a bit so i can point to that 585 scroll back down just a bit you can also just type in equals C5, but I do recommend using formulas here. And that's when we hit enter, that's going to increase the supplies here. It's going to increase supplies on the trial balance, and it's going to put us out of balance here. So let's do that. There it is, 585 here, 585 here, 585 here. I'm going to go back to 130% down here. 130%. So there it is, if it was a little bit small before. <laughs> And here it is here, it's been pulled over the trial balance. Next, we will post the accounts payable half. Accounts payable is the fourth uh, transaction of the fourth account on the trial balance and therefore is the fourth account on the general ledger. So here's the cash, accounts receivable supplies, and then accounts payable, first orange account, only orange account, only liability account. We're gonna be here on the credit side, so we're in accounts payable, credit side, in 09. I'm gonna say equals and then just point to that 585. Once we select enter, it'll increase the balance here, 585. It'll then pull that balance over here to the accounts payable, 585. Put us back in balance on the trial balance and enter. So there we have that. Remember that this means that accounts payable is going up in the credit direction, not a negative, it's not going in the hole. We don't have a negative accounts payable. We have it going up in the credit direction at this point. Scrolling back down, next activity that happened, B says, paid for supplies purchased in the past 585. First question, is cash affected? In this case, we're going to say yes, the term being paid. Now remember, you might have seen that. You might have said paid is usually a key term for cash. And you might also say, but it also says accounts uh, on account. Uh, well, it doesn't say on account here, but it could have said on account. And if it had said on account, note that you might start thinking that, that cash isn't affected because it has something to do with accounts payable. And if it were the account relating to us purchasing supplies, that would be true. But notice here that uh, we're paying off the payable on account and uh, therefore both cash and the payable will be affected. We'll see that first, however, by first concentrating on cash. Anytime we see paid, we're just basically going to say, let's concentrate on cash first. And we're going to say, okay, cash has a debit balance. We need to make it go down. So we're going to do the opposite thing to it as its normal debit balance, which in this case is a credit. Copy the cash in E5, right click, copy. We're going to put that under the B. So here's the B. We're going to put it underneath in cell B9, right click and paste one, two, three. We're going to then double click before the C, space three times, and then in cell uh, D9, we're going to put the amount, that amount of credit 585. Credit 585, the credits always go on the bottom, so we're just going to put that on the bottom and think about cash first, even though it is on the bottom. Then we're going to debit something for 585. I'm going to do that with a formula in cell C8, negative of this number, and enter. So we're going to debit something for 585. We just need the account now at this point. That account then 
uh, is going to be, you might think it should be supplies, but it's not, of course, because, well, that might be the first thing that jumps into our mind, but it's not because we bought the supplies before, and now, of course, we are paying off what we owe on the supplies, kind of like paying off a credit card that we owe after a purchase has been made, and that is going to be the payable account. So accounts payable, I'm going to copy accounts payable. We're going to put that in B8, right click and paste 123 in B8. Now we know that we're going to debit the accounts payable because we credited cash and we need to debit something therefore. We also want to double check it however. We see that accounts payable has a credit balance represented by the brackets. It needs to go down because this account represents people owing us money and this transaction represents someone paying us money, and therefore the account representing people owing us money must go down. So we're gonna do the opposite thing to it as its normal balance, which in this case is a debit. So that's how we can kind of double check our thought process and better understand the workings and the function of accounts payable. We'll then post this out. We're gonna post accounts payable first. It's gonna be the fourth transaction on the trial balance, for, uh, fourth account on the trial balance. Therefore, it's the fourth account on the general ledger as well. So we got cash, accounts receivable, supplies, and then of course, accounts payable over here. We are debiting accounts payable, so we're on the debit side in cell N10, where we will say equals, and then point to this 585 debit. That will bring the balance down to zero. It'll pull that balance of zero over here to the trial balance as well, and put us out of balance by 585. So there we have that. We have the zero over here, which you can't really see, but it's zero. And then we got the zero here. We're out of balance by 585. Pulling back over, we're going to post the cash side now. Cash has been credited. That's going to be the first account on the trial balance and the first account on the general ledger. Here's the cash account. We are on the credit side in this case. So we are in cell K9. So K9 equals and then point to this 585 we have a debit balance here it's going down by 585 in the credit direction leaving a balance of 49,415 that balance being pulled over to the trial balance 49,415 and putting us back in balance here on the trial balance meaning debits equal the credits next transaction we see C says purchased auto service on account so we purchased auto service, so first question, is cash affected? We're going to say no, cash isn't affected, we purchased it on account, key term, on account. Therefore, we're going to be affecting accounts payable. However, it's often easier to know what we received in order to know uh, whether we debit or credit the account. So I would think about that first. In this case, that's being auto services. So that's not going to be auto the asset, it's going to be an expense here. So the expenses are down here, auto expense. I'm assuming it's like an oil change or something like that. Expenses always have debit balances and they only go up. Therefore, we're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, uh, which in this case is another debit. So we're going to copy the auto expense in E11, paste that here in B11, right click, paste 1, 2, 3. The amount then being... 416 so 416 in c11 we also want to put that same amount on the credit side on d12 i'm going to do that with a formula that formula negative of that number and enter now we just need to put the account here again we didn't pay cash so we're not going to credit cash what we will credit is the accounts payable so we owe the accounts payable that will be the credit i'm going to copy accounts payable we're going to put that on the bottom in cell B12, right click and paste 1, 2, 3. Double click before the A in order to indent. Indent three times, space bar. There we have that. Now we already knew that we were going to credit the accounts payable because we debited the auto expense. But if we were to double check that, we would say accounts payable has a credit balance. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, another credit. We need to make it go up because the bad thing is going up, meaning we bought something on account, we bought something, did not pay for it, therefore needing to increase the account, representing the fact that we owe money in the future for something that we bought today or expended today. 
So here is the auto expense. We're going to record that first. Note that the expenses are on the bottom, meaning it's cash and then liabilities or sorry, assets and then liabilities, then equity, then revenue, then expenses. So the expense is going to be way over here on the general ledger as well. It's in order of assets, liabilities, equity, expenses. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so we can see more at one time. So I'm going to make this a bit smaller. So there we have that and we have our expenses over on the right hand side. And we're looking to post this expense, this debit, way over here in the auto expense on the debit side. Therefore, we are here in R9. R9, we're going to say that that equals and then point to this 416. Once we select enter, this will go up to 416. Put, us, uh, put the 416 in here as well. Put us out of balance by 416 and net income will go down. Expenses increasing brings net income down. So there we have that. We have the 416 over here. 416 brought over to the trial balance. And we are out of balance by 416. Net income, 50,000 minus 416 of 49,584. We're going to make this a bit larger again. Go up back up to 130. We're then going to post the second half. Here is the second half to accounts payable. So accounts payable, that's the fourth account here. So here's accounts payable, the fourth account to the general ledger. We want to be on the credit side. So we're over here on the credit side. Next transaction down in cell 011. We will then say equals and point to this 416. That's going to make this go up by 416. It's going to put that same amount here in the accounts payable and put us out of balance. So there we have that. 416 out of balance by 416. Next transaction, D says, purchase business meals on account 1,950. Is cash affected? We're gonna say no, cash is not affected. We purchased them on account. Therefore, we purchased it basically with the accounts payable account. But I would think about what we received first. So we received meals and entertainment. That is what we consumed. That would be a, an expense down here. So expenses, they all have debit balances. They only go up in the debit direction. Therefore, we're going to debit the meals and entertainment. So I'm just going to copy that. We just call it entertainment here to shorten it down and paste it in B14, right click and paste. The amount then, 1950, 1950. We're going to credit something in D15 for the same amount by saying negative of that number. And then the credit will go to the accounts payable, accounts payable account. So E8, right click, copy the accounts payable, paste in B15, right click, paste 123. Then we're going to double click in front of the A so we can indent it, double click, 123 space and indent. Now again, we already knew that we were going to credit the accounts payable because we debited the, the expense here. But if we double check it, we know that accounts payable represents a liability. It's something that we owe. It needs to go up. The bad thing is going up. We owe more money after this transaction. Therefore, we will do the same thing to it as its normal balance, which is another credit. Now we're going to post this out. So we're going to post the, the meals entertainment or just the entertainment first. And that's going to be here. It's the last account. Assets, liabilities, equity, revenue, and expenses. Last account on the trial balance. So it's going to be the last account on the general ledger so i'm going to make this a bit smaller bring it back down to 110 we're way over here in the meals and entertainment so we want to post this meals and entertainment all the way over here to this meals and entertainment on the debit side in cell r15 r15 we're going to say that equals and then point to this 1950 way over here so that will be equal to c14 once we select enter, it will populate this amount here. That same amount will populate over here in entertainment and put us out of balance by that same amount. So there we have that. I'm going to make this a bit larger, bring it back up to 130%. Now we're looking for the accounts payable. So here is accounts payable. We're looking at accounts payable. Here's our first lie and only liability. Here and we will then post that over here to the general ledger. It's the fourth account on the trial balance. Therefore, 
the fourth account on the general ledger. We're going to be down here in 012. 012 is going to equal, and we will point to this 1950. Once we select enter, this will go up by 1950, and this will then go up by the same 1950. It'll put us back in balance down here. So enter. We're now at 2366 here, 2366 here. Then we got the last transaction here, which says that we paid for auto service, which was purchased on account in the past for 16. So is cash affected? We're going to say yes. And it's going down because we paid. Now, again, we might be saying, hey, I see on account and I see paid. Those are our two factors that typically indicate cash and accounts payable, respectively. And oftentimes we might think that those two things don't happen in the same transaction. And if we were to purchase something on account, then cash would not be affected. However, in this case, both are affected because we're paying something off with cash. We're paying off the liability. We're paying off the accounts payable. So what we're going to do then is we're going to say cash is going down. Cash has a debit to balance. We will do the opposite thing to it, therefore, to make it go down, which in this case is a credit. So I'm going to copy cash in cell C5. We're going to put that on the bottom, scroll down just a bit. We're going to put that in B18, right click and paste 123. I'm going to double click. We're going to double click before the C, indent three times and enter. And then we're going to put the dollar amount 416 in the credit side on D18 by saying negative 418 and enter. Double check that's actually 416. Sorry about that. Negative 416. Then we're going to put that same amount on the debit side. I'm going to do that with a formula of that formula, negative of that number, taking that number, flipping the sign, making the negative a positive. Then we just need this account here. And what will that account be? You may think that it should be auto expense, or that would probably be the first thing that we think of considering it's for auto expense. But of course, we already recorded the auto expense in the past. And at this time, we are recording the reduction in the accounts payable account. We're paying off what we owe for work done in the past. We recorded the expense at the point in time it was consumed in order to help generate revenue, even though cash was not uh, expended according to the matching principle. Now we're just paying off what we owe. So I'm going to copy the payable. We're going to put that on top, right click, paste, one, two, three. There we have that. We already knew that we were going to debit the payable because we credited cash. But if we double check it now, we can say, well, the payable represents what we owe to other people. We're now paying off those people and therefore that credit balance needs to go down. Uh, the way to make something go down is we do the opposite thing to it, which in this case is a debit. So you always want to kind of double check that account and that'll give you a better idea of what the payable is, how it functions, and it'll double check the full journal entry overall. Then we're going to post this. So I'm going to post this. I'm going to make this a bit smaller so we can see more at the same time. So we're going to post this to the payable. So it's in order, assets and then liabilities. Here's the accounts payable on the general ledger. This being the process of posting. We want to be on the debit side down here in N13. N13 equals, we'll then point to this 416. Once we select enter, it's going to bring this balance of 2366 down by 416. And then it'll bring that balance over to here. <laughs> and uh, we'll be out of balance by 416. So there we have that. Uh, we brought this down by 416 to 1950. That same 1950 brought over to the trial balance, out of balance on the trial balance by 416. That 1950 now representing just that one account that's still owed, which is the Mills Entertainment we bought in D, section D or journal entry D. And now we're going to post the cash side now. So here's cash. First account on the uh, trial balance. First account on the GL. We want to be on the credit side. So we're on the credit side and we are here in K10. K10 equals pointing to that 416. That will bring this balance down. It will bring that same balance over to the cash here. 
and it will put us back in balance there. So there we have that. Note that this uh, is a completed problem. Now, if we take a look at accounts payable, this is the typical kind of routine that you will see in the payable. I'm gonna zoom in a bit more. And that will be that we're gonna buy something on account. It's kind of like a credit card. Well, we should see this when we look at the trial balance or the general ledger, I should say, or the T account. This pattern should be the pattern we should see, meaning we bought something on account, then we paid something on account, then we bought something on account, then we paid something on account. So it's always gonna be a credit balance because every time we purchase something on account, it's gonna go up in the credit direction. And every time we pay something off, it's going to bring that balance back down. Now, note if you were thinking about something like your credit card statement, it may be a little bit more complicated in that we might not be able to match up exactly. You know, we might pay like installments. So we might have to match up partial payments to make up uh, the credit. So the credit might be on there for $585. And we might have a $100 payment and then a, you know, $485 payment. But the point is that it should be increasing. Uh, with a credit and then we make payments decreasing it back down and typically we can actually go through there and just kind of cross off these transactions and see which ones are related to each other typical pattern we will see when working with accounts payable later on we're going to have to track this activity not just by date but by who we owe and that's going to be a subsidiary ledger we will track and it'll be by vendor by who we buy stuff from